Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I have a special kind of video. This video is gonna be a collaboration between myself and the other YouTube channel, Doing the Most. And um, he lives close to me. He gifted me some Opshog Kvike or Kvik yeast. Now, I don't know how you say, I could be saying it wrong, sorry. But this is from a previous brew of his. So the test I'm wanting to run today is uh, I'm doing part one in that I am going to be brewing a mead with this second strain yeast, essentially. And then I will be taking my yeast I have from my brew and um, washing it and then giving it to him. And he's gonna make the exact same mead and we're gonna see what the taste difference is between them. So the mead I'm making today is a buckwheat traditional mead. I'm gonna give him some buckwheat honey and that stuff, so don't worry about that. The recipe for it is three quarters of a gallon of water, two pounds of buckwheat honey, this Opshog uh, Kvike yeast or Kvik yeast, and that's it. So let me go ahead and mix my honey and water to make my must, and then we'll talk about this yeast. Okay, so I've mixed my ingredients. There's a lot of foam on here. That'll, of course, pop and fill up this meat a little bit. If you know anything about this kind of yeast, it is well known for very hot fermentations. So it is the summer right now, and I am planning to take and put this thing outside in my sunroom, where it's decently guarded, and let it ferment, where that room gets to be on a normal day 90 plus and that's just because I'm in Oklahoma and it's hot summertime So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pitch this yeast into here and uh, I'm definitely very excited to see how this ferments with um, with the Heat I've never actually used a um, a Kavik yeast before so I don't know the specs percentage on this. I'll put it on here how high of an ABV you can get to. I'll have to look that up. But I do know it ferments well in the heat. So let me go ahead and dump this bad boy in real fast. Okay, this is all mixed up. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and write my information down on it, on the side of it and record it and then put it out here and I'll give you some updates about the fermentation. And let's see how it ferments in the heat. For the record, I did forget to do a gravity reading, but the gravity reading is 1.080. Um, so we're looking at roughly, I believe that's a 10 and a half percent if I'm guessing. Not, yeah, ooh, about, about 10 and a half percent. So that's the expectation. Let's go ahead and ferment. We're about 24 hours in. I have put this heat wrap around it over the night to heat it up. It gets up to about uh, 80 degrees with the heat wrap, but clearly, that's been fermenting and pushing stuff out. So we'll see how long it takes. So I took the heat wrap off because it was getting up to like 120, which is way too hot for what I wanna do. Um, it's been sitting like this in the sunroom for probably five, six days now. The lowest it's gotten is 80, uh, or sorry, 78 Fahrenheit. And the highest it got was 95, 96 Fahrenheit. Um, it's almost done. You can see that it's still going a little bit. Um, but I sh I'm sure that it is close to being done. So washing the yeast. We're gonna take this, this is the yeast cake and honestly some sediment. And we, first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it into the sanitized uh, mason jar. So the washing portion is pretty simple, really. Really, we're just gonna take, pour this in here, and I'm gonna try to get everything out of the bottom of that. It doesn't really matter about aerating in this case. It's like a really gross, weird chocolate milk. Now, we're gonna take and we're, put, we're gonna put some water on top of this, and this will start to separate out, and the yeast should hopefully start to fall at the bottom, the sediment, everything will separate out. So let me add probably up to uh, two thirds of the line, whatever, uh, water. I've added my water, now I'm gonna put this on and I am going to let it set for a little while and we'll see some layers form. At that point, we'll pour off the water and hopefully some of the sediment and keep repeating the process until we get just the yeast.
Big props to Man Made Mead for providing me with the buckwheat honey for this experiment. Buckwheat honey is pretty thick and syrupy, so it took a little while to fill up the demijohn here. Once I finally got all the honey in there, I added a teaspoon of diammonium phosphate. Wanted to make sure this had enough nutrient to really get off the ground. I poured my yeast slurry on top of that and then promptly filled the jug with water. A few shakes and stir, stir, stir. And then in lieu of an airlock, I just wrapped it with a paper towel and rubber band. Looking pretty good. Our starting gravity was 1.075. And the next morning fermentation had kicked off and I found this lovely mess. Fermentation went pretty smoothly on this. I started seeing a stall around 1.04, so I added a little bit more nutrient. I used Fermate O for that. And I also wrapped it in man-made meads heat wrap to get the temperature up a little bit. And as you can see, it created quite a fun mess that I got to clean off my floor and walls. And then it seems to have stalled at 1.01. .01. So I decided to rack it off and see if there had been any movement and no, there hadn't. So it seems like the yeast had finally given up. And a few days after that, I decided to get it bottled so we could finish up this interesting collaborative experiment. Ended up getting nine full bottles out of this one gallon batch. So now it was time to do our tasting. And here we are with the grand taste test. I have BC here, of course. And he's, uh, you know, he made the other half of this mead. Mm -hmm. um, we were both just talking about it. We're really curious to see the results. I can't remember the last time I tasted this. I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know if you tasted yours recently. I tasted it on Tuesday. Okay, so, <laughs> so you have a vague idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's let's just see. Let's go for aroma first. Okay. I feel like that's always a good starting point. So I'm just gonna A B. Okay. Whoa! Holy cow! That's so different. Whoa! It is. <laughs> that's. Well, huh. This is uh, okay. Dry. There's definitely a dry factor. Yeah. You can get a little sweetness on yours on the nose. I'm also picking up a little booze on the nose of yours. Yeah. Whereas mine smells a little bit more like. What was your starting gravity? Uh, Just so I remember. I believe it was 070. I have mine, to go back and look. Gotta look at mine. Oh yeah, mine's a little hotter. Mine's 1090. So oh. mine's gonna have a little bit. Uh, okay then. I don't remember. I don't know how that happened, but. Oh I think well. mine was 070, but we yeah. can we can we can take that check into the account. tape. <laughs> Interesting. This so, one's very uh, grassy. Mine's very, very grassy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when people talk about buckwheat, a lot of times they talk about it having like a horse blanket aroma that like hay that. and that's for sure <laughs> and manure. <laughs> like that's. I mean that's that's the common that is, tasting. That's though. true. And so I'm picking that up kind of in both, but you can smell the sugars. Yeah. In mine, it smells sweet. It smells some um, to me. Maybe it's just my nose, but it's got some spicy, spicy, mm -hmm. like baking spices. Let's start with mine, since it's in your hand. Yeah, I'm trying to identify what that is. It does have like, like, I get like a, a um, brown sugar. We just mm -hmm. mentioned brown sugar. Maybe that's in my brain. Yeah, yeah, almost like a, a dusting of cinnamon. But, yeah, but not, not like in your face, like a like a cinnamon wreath or something. Yeah. It's just like it's back there somewhere. All I'm right. going for it. The body is lighter than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Definitely has some bite. I think mm -hmm. Definitely get that alcohol. The um, It's pretty smooth, surprisingly. I thought, I can't remember the last time I tasted it, but I don't think it was very smooth last time I tasted it. It also has aged a little bit with some headspace yeah. on it because I've been lazy, so. <laughs> no, I, I don't taste anything that's like signaling oxidation or anything in here. Um, it is smoother. There's and and maybe attributing to that headspace. There's almost a little bit of like a port or sherry mm -hmm. kind of butteriness. Yeah, that's just a it's just a hint though. The buckwheat to me has its own like body. That that mm -hmm. honey is just has this because there's a lot of solids. I mean, even in this thing, after racking it multiple times, I'm yeah. sure you experienced it too. I think you texted me one time and said it was like <laughs> this layer on the bottom is yeah. just yeah. buckwheat residual. <laughs> Yeah. 
This is interesting. This doesn't taste like a buckwheat thing that I've I've had before. This, uh -huh. this is a different flavor profile, and part of that is because yours is dry. Yeah. So I don't have any of the sugars backing up those kind of like molasses-y flavors that, mm -hmm. that you get with buckwheat. I have a friend who just uses buckwheat honey on pancakes, like instead of syrup. I've used it for some like toast, and it's a lot. Uh, it is pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> this one, the body on it's it's full. I feel like um, the yeast... Of course, mine, I guess, is second gen. Yours is third gen. So mm -hmm. we haven't tried yours yet, but... And this the... yeast was kind of questionable when I gave it to you. <laughs> there was... I remember opening it, and I was like, this smells <laughs> kind of, like, sulfury. And you're like, should... I don't know, should it? Yeah, I mean, it had been in the fridge for a while. <laughs> but the... the Yeah, it... I, I had a second vial of it in the yeah. fridge, and when I opened it when you were over that one day... I was like, oh yeah, whoops, sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> my bad. Um, talking about contributions from the yeast, there is an edge of hoppiness to this. There is a mm, grassy I can see that, yeah. bitterness that I don't, and maybe that's why I'm saying that this doesn't taste like a buckwheat brew that I've had before. Yeah. Because I am picking up hmm. notes of like, long clippings a little bit. Yeah. Which is... I'm wondering if that is due to the kvaik, since it throws off, depending on your strain, those kinds of flavors and esters, and due to the heat that you got this up to. Yeah. Kind of generating some of those flavors. Do you do you pick that up? Yeah, I, I... I see. It's very, like, um, when I think hops, I think bright, but I could see that, gra that grassy, that... Mm. Um, it's right acid, back Acid, like a little bit of... A I get a little bit of acid, like... Yeah, it's on the back of the tongue. That's part of the bite, I guess I'm talking about too, is the alcohol, but also a little bit of bite. As this breathes, that booziness goes away, though. Mm-hmm. I'm curious now for yours. All right, you ready to switch over? Yours, um, what what was yours starting and and we your rough gra uh, final gravity? If, if I recall, it started at 1.070. Okay. I used two pounds of the buckwheat honey you gave me in a one gallon container. And then it finished. The last, I, I checked it three days in a row, and it was at 1.015. And I couldn't do anything to get it to go down further without fear of Either my it. 7 looks like a 9, or my 9 looks like a 7. I don't know. I'll put my correct thing on here. But <laughs> I thought I'd said, I don't know. Anyways, correct answer. I just there. followed your directions. Yeah, I know. But I, I think we, I think mm. this yeast was stressed when I gave it to you, and I think it, it, it just gave up. <laughs> it just got tired. <laughs> yeah. It's got a little, um, a little bit of slight carbonation just mm -hmm. from like when I opened it. I think you, like you said, the, it had re-fermented some. Yeah. Because I do get some, uh, I mean, also because it's not as heavy, but I get some like, uh, not, not carbonation. Not, what is it? I'm trying to think of. I like yours. I like yours. Uh, maybe it's because it's a little sweeter. <laughs> but it has, it does retain the, the char more mm -hmm. characters of the, uh, buckwheat honey yeah. and I think like that the whole test of course is you know generation three what happens mm. yeah the buckwheat is is on the back of the palate kind of on the finish um, you, you it, it tastes like fresh buckwheat honey but on the front I'm getting like zesty orangey kind of like a zing of flavor yeah oh Do you taste mm, that yeah it's a little bit like a, like an orange peel orange zest. yeah you don't get as much of the grassiness from this. Mm -mm. It's definitely more, obviously more sweet because of the final gravity, mm -hmm. but there's it's much brighter. Yeah. And I think that that can hide, I, I'm sure the grassiness, the buckwheat character is still there. It's just being kind of overshadowed by the brightness from that honey. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. They taste markedly different mm -hmm. though. I mean, they are, they are completely- Like sweetness aside, like sweetness does of course factor into this and, yeah but the base value of the mead is it's just so so different to me it's um <laughs> totally different i'm trying to put it to words it's hard i mean if you if you serve these to me in like a blind taste test and i didn't know what the variable was i would never guess that it was the yeast yeah i would guess something totally different about you could pick process. up buckwheat on both but yeah the <laughs> I, I wouldn't say, oh, you, you used, you know, lazy third-gen yeast. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, there, it would, I would definitely be able to ID that these were both made from buckwheat honey, but 
I would think that, I mean, obviously, I would think they were made by different meme makers who maybe didn't know what each other did. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting to me that we were following, I mean, I was following in your shadow the whole time, and they both turned out so different. Yeah, mine's, they have different bodies too, which is very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. This one, like, even though mine is possibly lighter ABV, you know, has a um, much more watery mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it definitely does. It's thinner. <laughs> Which is interesting, because I... You didn't do anything to build up the body. No tannin, no. or tea, just or... just straight up. Yeah. And and I brewed with the honey that you gave me. So I, it's... This is... This was interesting. I, the, I like the Kvaik. I definitely... Yeah. Um, I have to I'm get you start better. using some more. <laughs> <laughs> get you a better colony next time. I, I... The whole, you know, penultimate thing is... Do yeasts, um, over time, mm -hmm. I think that they are definitely reusable. Obviously, there are some companies who reuse yeast for years and years yeah, and years. decades. Uh, I can't, it's kind of unexplainable why yours would stop um, shy of mine. Yeah. Especially considering if mine is starting at 1090. Yeah. Then, I don't know, that's pretty, pretty It's wild, weird. So. It's Well, and we both had stalls, like, at the same time. Yeah, right? I was like going to say, we need to talk about the process, because we, we both hit the same walls. Yeah. And we both added Fermato when we hit that wall. Mm -hmm. um, I I think mine got done like 1.03 or 1.025, and I, I splash racked it to mm -hmm. try and get a little oxygen in there, and it was able to get down to 1.015, but this was a temperamental yeast. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> it was very... Very um, different. I think the one variable that might could have excused us, or excused our results, is that I fermented outside. Mm -hmm. I had more quote natural heat because mm -hmm. I did it when it was hotter. It was a lot hotter. So, and there was one point it did get up to one whatever ten, one twenty, and I that's when I pulled the heat wrap off. Yeah. And I was like, that's too hot. So maybe that that could have produced some different esters and fusels that I think have almost definitely. since burned out. It's hard to say, but they are incredibly different. Yeah. I, I My frustration with this experiment is that I wasn't able to get this to go dry. Yeah. I think that would have been the real interesting test, and I think we probably need to duplicate this toward that end. I think doing it with a regular honey would be nice, too. That yeah. Would... <laughs> Fair. I mean, well, I like the buckwheat, but it is it has its own, I think, problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A uh, lot of solids. If you've used buckwheat honey, you know exactly what we're talking yeah. about. It is its own worst enemy in a lot yeah. of ways. It's the color is is very similar. The clarity is good on both. I uh -huh. just the flavor profile is totally different. And I can't I can't I can't explain why mine wouldn't finish dry. I would love to hear. That's great a moment for us to say down in the comments if you have an idea of what happened because. Um, Obviously, we, we know a lot about mead making, but we don't know everything. If you have some idea of why a third generation yeast um, wouldn't continue on, uh, leave it down below. But this has been really interesting. Mm -hmm. I definitely think we're going to recreate this in the future with probably some other variable or some other things. But uh, I appreciate you coming and, of course. and taste testing. I'm doing more research, mead research. Hey, it, we need little lab coats to say mead research. Yeah, I know, <laughs> like a uh, little lab coat. <laughs> little, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I've got, got a whole vision of it. <laughs> Just walkings. I'm leaving this in, by the way. Got, got Bill Nye. It's like Bill Nye and Beekman. Oh. This, this may be like an old reference, but. Uh, I like that. Now. I'll take Beekman. <laughs> uh, no, this was fun. I've got several bottles of uh, great buckwheat mead now, which may end up carbonated. <laughs> so. Well, I'm going to bottle mine. We'll revisit this in the future, sure. maybe, and see a year from now how things have changed. Um, it'll, I think they'll be completely different, as they already are. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. If, thanks for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this from, you know, the beginning of this kind of weird test to the end. The results uh, are definitely interesting, to yeah. say the least. If you want to see more mead content, go check out BC's channel over on Doing the Most, where he does um, a lot of great mead making he makes a lot of meads he does a lot of mead sciencey things he explains things better than i do quite often um so go check him out and uh that'll be in the description but go check that we have some other content coming 
the future that will be uh, interesting. I don't want to spoil it, but it's going to be fun. So I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.